Thank you for coming, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm going to do something a little bit out of the ordinary, and that is I'm going to show old work. Um, because there's a show upstairs for you to see of all my new work. So, um, and also, it's winter, and it reminds me of the time I made this show ten years ago. So, um, this is the first solo exhibition that I had as like a solo artist. Up until this point, I had mostly done um, collaborative work, um, mostly like in video and video installation, and. This, I guess, this exhibition, The Woods, which was at Skoll in Montreal, was the first time that I did my own show, which was pretty cool and fun. So, um, and also, I guess, like, I wanted to think about how um, my work really kind of morphs and, um, like, older pieces are broken down and then grafted onto one another to create newer pieces and things along those lines, and so this is, I guess, really kind of where it all began in a way. Um, and also, it, it really interests me that like 10 years ago, I decided to kind of make an architectural intervention in the gallery, and I really had no idea where this would lead me, <laughs> which you'll see gets kind of drastic down the line, but um, this wall here is actually perfectly flush with like the usual wall in the gallery and then there's this corridor that you walk down with this distressing and this blue painting as a panel at the back because um, my my first degree actually was in painting and oh, the video's already out okay and so you know that like, I, I guess I graduated or I finished Emily Carr. Um, I don't really know how to work that, so I'm just going to go like this. Um, I finished Emily Carr in 1995, so that was, I guess, like another 10 year um, break in between. But um, I think I was still really kind of interested. Hi. Oh, hi really? So like I was really kind of interested always in like working with like these other materials like sculpture and um, video and things along those lines, but like really kind of trying to work with them in a painterly way. Okay. So that video I just showed you was rear projected onto this piece of mylar right here that I just kind of like taped onto some twigs. You can maybe see like the tape. Like this is just like masking tape right there. And so like I was always just working with materials in a way that was like very at hand and very kind of um, easy for me to do because I never, like I explained my first degree was in painting and so like technically that's the only thing I really know how to do. Um, like from a place where like, well that's actually not true now, but because I've developed other techniques over time, but like um, that was like the one thing I was like trained to do quite specifically. Um, and so this is like another view of the gallery and what we kind of see here is like the beginnings of like my weird obsession with think stuff mm -hmm. and like hoarding stuff, but then also kind of like the categorization of stuff is like something that we can kind of see happening here where there's like blue things that are kind of kept together and then um, different kind of things as they're categorized and like there's like and I was like also like using <laughs> rocks or like I was using rocks in 2005 also um, and then I was like putting these googly eyes on them because I was really interested kind of in the sentience or like the potential for sentience like of these kinds of objects and materials and it's funny to me because like I'm still obsessed with rocks and like these rock forms and kind of like the, anthropomorph the anthropomorphization of rocks and such and so we see that here and that's another view of the gallery and another kind of like thing I made, another thing I made, and like this was like me really kind of experimenting, as, like for me personally, 
to kind of like create forms out of like various miscellany. So like this was actually quite an aha moment in my work because what I took here was just like all kinds of like weird random objects that I had in the studio. So like this kind of this thing here is um a painting that I had done on mylar and and so and like actually this here as well was like a drawing that was done on mylar so like I was really combining um, a lot of different kinds of objects just through using drywall compound to then like form it into like an idea like I had an idea that I wanted to make an owl when I did this but it was just like I had no idea how I was going to take these things and then like press it into oh. an owl but anyways, it did, it worked, and I kept on doing that again, and you'll see more of examples. There's a cat, I did the same thing. <laughs> and like that was like a found chair that I had found, and we'll see that chair again. And so, like I think one of the things I was, like one of the things I was thinking of when I wanted to talk today was like past lives, like the past lives of my objects, and like how they're just continually um, morphing and becoming like new lives as we go. Um, and so like, you know, it's kind of like a thing here where I'm like putting wood with these paintings and you know, it's all very, like, this all is very free for me at this point, like, in time. Not, um, I didn't really realize what this would become <laughs> and when I made this. But anyways, yeah, I'm pretty into um, collecting old pieces of wood. And there's old pieces of wood collected in the gallery now. And then also another weird thing I was doing that I wasn't even aware that I was doing. Um, well, I was aware, but I wasn't aware that this would just be a thing that would keep churning. But like um, these kinds of like mini trees over here that I fashioned out of just like weird kind of like florist, like dried florist material. So kind of like having this mini forest and then like these found pieces of wood and like just kind of mixing between like synthetic nature and um, actually collected nature and this was one of the funniest things I think I've ever done I would love to do it I would love it if I did this again but like I had a full moon just like sitting on a laptop is like the video display in the gallery I thought that was pretty <laughs> witty and I was like this is pretty funny what you just did here um, so that's the final slide for this exhibition and then I had this kind of very interesting exciting um, turn of events where at the time I was programmed like I had an exhibition at Skull and then six months later I had another exhibition at Clark and at the time um, in Montreal like that was a pretty um, like people really took notice of that because um, Skull and Clark really occupied like the kind of the top slots in people's minds of like artist run centers in Montreal and to kind of even do both of those galleries was considered like kind of a big deal but then when I did them to back to back so quickly like that was also considered kind of a big deal but like what happened was I was then like just disgustingly busy and I had to then produce another show within six months and so I had this like weird idea in mind that I wanted to like make a line of garden furniture because <laughs> like I was really but like I was really kind of interested in this idea of like mass production but then kind of like mimicking mass production with my own body in a way that like would be impossible so like which is why I conceived it as like a line so there's like a bunch of urns and then like fountains and things like that but like of course like they're always like they're not ever perfectly done um, and the way I made these was a similar way that I told you how I made the owl so like that first sort of big pile of things that you see coming out um, in the woods uh, basically like all of that material got formed into these into this like garden furniture and this had a video in the center of it this I don't think I'm not going to show any of the video from this exhibition because I don't think this application really was like the hottest this is the first time I think I, I could have done and I should have done sculpture just like standalone but that wasn't what my experiment was in my mind and so I kept going with the idea which was to then kind of somehow have, have like technology embedded in these things but 
that idea has kind of fallen away. And I don't think it like destroyed the show because of that. And there's a better example of what that looks like, and I'll show, you'll see it in another slide. But like, this was a lot of work, and um, also the weather was really working against me <laughs> because it was really humid, and so it kept falling apart a lot, and so then like finally it would hold. That was like the time I bought a lot of fans. <laughs> And it's also kind of like, you know, but like, I guess I can talk about these, I, these like types of forms as well, because I mean, I was also kind of interested in the idea of the way like can, the garden furniture today is like very kind of um, plastic and throwaway and tacky, but it's kind of like based on like even like, well, it's based on like antiquity. So like there's that, so like it's based on kind of like, classical forms like the urn and fountains and whatnot and then like how that kind of um, keeps moving throughout the ages and then as time passes it becomes a lot more frail and disposable so that was kind of another idea there's a cupid that I was like working on here and this this pillar here like this bit of red here was also another LCD and this I think looked really well this I think it looked really good in this piece um, it was just like this weird eye looking out, but it didn't quite go so well in the fountain, but whatever that happens. Um, <laughs> these are all a bunch of rabbits I made. Ooh, DVD players. <laughs> I know, I know, so there's like the, yeah, so it's like, there, okay, so then that was, that was that exhibition, and um, following that, I was, um, I was in an exhibition at the National Gallery um, that was called Deconstruction. I have a really hard time saying English words in French. I do speak French, but not the English words. Or the, like, I can't say installation either <laughs> in French, which is so dumb. I make installation, and the one thing I make, I, I'm going to stumble over the accent. Um, so with this, I wanted to do, like this I think I'm really kind of working with my interest in time. Um, and I, I, this, this piece was called Portal to Future Contemporary Art Wing, featuring as yet uncollected artworks. And so I was imagining like this imaginary futuristic collection of the National Gallery. And I was able to create that through the magic of green screen and video. <laughs> and. Um, Basically, I wanted to kind of have this thing happen where, like, it all of a sudden, like, and this I think is another recurring theme a lot that's very strong in my work now, where, like, um, I wanted to have the viewer kind of walk into a situation that was a little bit difficult to kind of parse, and as though you're kind of stumbling onto something that has happened, but in this case, like, it's also kind of leading you into this strange future. And I'm just going to, I'm actually going to show the video. I'm going to not show the whole video because it's 17 minutes, but I'm going to show um, a clip of it. Is that like what the National Gallery is made of? Then? That's like my envision walls. of it, yeah. Like that's all the kind of junk in their walls, basically. <laughs> like that's what's going on in your walls, guys. Um, Okay, this I'm going to try and show full screen. Oh, I learned. <laughs>
like the corner of a day planner. <laughs> of their collection but also like I made that I made that gallery to um, like I made it to scale model of the gallery to then like shoot and then to superimpose the work on and um, when you see that work rear projected through the hole it doesn't look as like I'm having as many struggles with the um, the blue screen as I obviously am, but at the same time, you know, I think blue screen is like that, but it also, I don't, it's kind of, it is homemade. And so, you know, you see a lot of like weird collections like dust, like my use of like dust and all that, but then, um, yeah, time and the humor. <laughs> I think, I think I've showed you a lot of that because I find a lot of it pretty funny. Yes, but um, right, and so this is Factory for a Day 1996 to 2008, and this I exhibited at the Musée d'Art Contemporain for the first um, Quebec Triennale, and what this kind of effectively did in a way was like take my entire archive up until this point that like I had available and then put it into one work. So. This is like all my stuff, which is why it's got that date mark around it. Um, and I kind of wanted to model it a little bit on the Mac. 
So like the Mac has these sorts of like these triangles on the front of it and then like this here is like a rear screen. This is like a light box, but it's like a homemade light box where like the sides of it are actually cardboard. So like it's very kind of like, um, again, very homemade um, type of light box. And uh, this is actually the first time I start working with wax as well because these are all like individual wax bricks that I made by like just putting weird bits of my collection into um, molds and then um, making like wax bricks and then affixing each one individually onto the object. And there's a rear screen here of like a, a factory kind of in this eye and then um, uh, and like there's actually one of my rabbits from Clark is there and like a, a pipe kind of c connecting the spaces. Um, I'm going to show you the video that goes in this. This is like a LCD monitor that's kind of like embedded in the stairwell and then when you're in like this is um, forest room stars. Here we go. And so then this is the video that you would see in, in, on that tiny screen. <laughs> That's the sound. Help me. Help me. <laughs> doing that. Um, but also the other thing I forgot to mention that's important is that I do all my own sound work. So like nobody, like I do all my own sound and editing. So like nobody helped me at all on any of it. So like that also includes like the portal video where like I did all of that. Actually no, somebody did help me with the shooting because the lighting was very specific, and so like I had somebody come and like work with me on the lights. But, like basically, I I shot it. Um, but then, like I did all the editing, I did all the chroma key work, and I did that entire soundtrack. So like, um, that's all me. And I did all I did the sound also. I like and like the music as well. Like I I can even like write a bit of music sometimes. <laughs> like not a lot. I don't do it very often, but I've written some good songs. <laughs> on the computer, <laughs> but I don't really try to like do that. Um, and so this is like the cutout. I got the National Gallery to give this to me. So like this is actually the cutout of their wall that was then kind of like the side of the factory. And then you can kind of see the staircase from another angle. And that's and so I'm really interested in um, multi-layered views. Um, which again is like something that I'm working on a lot because like this this hole here like you really kind of see a lot of the piece through this hole so then and then there's again like these two eyes and um, 
what is actually on those eyes uh, or like behind those eyes are a bunch of photos that I took of my studio because I also really like to photograph my studio a lot because I get a lot of ideas about like the residue that gets left on the space like when the work is taken away it kind of looking at these traces somehow makes my mind go in um, new directions or like it gives me um, thoughts and so I have this like habit of like really taking a lot of these types of shots and so I had this residency at Sagami where I basically printed hundreds and hundreds of photos that I had that I have made and so these are like on like a very nice kind of like cottony paper that was then sewn onto a blanket and so like these are actually sewn onto a textile that are then kind of like then you see it through these eyes here and um, I did have somebody come and sew the photos onto the blanket for me because at that point I wasn't able to sew and um, I can sew now though but I probably would still get a better sewer to do this because you can't really the photos had to go on there perfectly, and let's face it, I'm not going to be able to accomplish that. <laughs> but, uh, and this is like, remember when I first showed like the image of like all the stuff on the outside? Like so it connects to the inside. And it's so, like this is like the metal pipe on the interior, and then there's a bunch of like knitting that's there as well. There's also kind of like, this here, like this piece of yarn here is also like unfinished knitting, and so it's like, you know, it's kind of, I guess I'm kind of thinking about like the old textile factories and so there's a lot of that happening here, but in this case it's like, you know, it's not quite what it used to be like and the work that's happening now is like maybe being done by spirits or like, you know, absent or like whoever is occupying this space is now kind of absent, but nevertheless there's like still work that's kind of taking place within the interior of the factory. And that was the chair that the, kit, the cat was sitting on. Um, and these were like very old paintings. Like this is all from like 1996. And so, um, and like this is like this bit of column there was that first corridor I showed you um, when uh, you walked in like skull. And then like that was the part that was all kind of ripped away. And so I made like bricks out of these paintings and then um, then like this other column. Luckily this is in the collection of the musée. So this is like being this is like held in time now. They own it. I you know hope it's still okay. Um, and like this again is like you know more textiles kind of like made to like look like these bricks or whatever. And um, so I have kind of an interest in that. Um, and then what comes after that show? What does come after? Oh yeah, this one. So this is from my solo show at the Mac. And um, you know, it's ironic in a way because like I just did that factory for a day 1996 to 2008. And the show was in 2009, so they basically cleaned me out. Like, I, did, I didn't have any more of an archive anymore. And so I was a little bit back to zero again, where I had to um, start again. And it was a really uh, daunting process, because this was like a five-room retrofit of like, um, not like, like of their smallest room, but that is still like a pretty large room. So I had like five rooms. And again, like I want, I wanted this to kind of be a situation that you're happening across, and you're like, what's going on? And also because like I live in Montreal, I'm really familiar with the architecture of the museum and like what that experience is like, and just how kind of tedious it can be, and especially how this particular room, how tedious that particular room is, and how that room actually sucks the life and soul out of the artwork that is shown in there. <laughs> like for me as the local viewer, because it's like, oh, this room again, and then it's like this, 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 and I was like, oh God, I don't want to see this room. So for my show, we're going to take a break from this room. We don't have to see it. We will not see any of it. And so um, I covered over all the space, but I also kind of wanted it to be this like, 
portal again that you walk through. Although rather than having it be sort of like this video um, projection of a future, past, kind of like um, science fiction type situation, like you're actually walking into the science fiction itself. And one of the things that really um, guides a lot of the way that I think about material and use material is like, I like to imagine like feeling, like body feeling, but like experiencing that through other senses, like the eyes and like how then like you can have like a strange, like how there can be like an, an uncanny kind of presence that you feel on your body a lot more than just through the eyes. But then I really wanted to bring that tactile experience onto the body, so that was why I did a false floor because like then like immediately like you're really implicated in what's happening and sort of like it is truly an immersive si situation that you're touching and I really have no idea well except for just that I didn't want to see that room anymore like that was how I came to sort of end up making like an immersive installation I think I was always kind of interested in making architecture working with architecture but I didn't actually envision myself ever doing a five-room build-out, but I did. Um, and so collecting all this stuff was a real, this, it was a lot of work. But now I have all this stuff, and um, that's pretty cool. Um, and so when you're, in this, when you're in this installation, like you really have a lot of different, um, there's a lot of options available in terms of like how you could look at it and like you're, you're always kind of at a fork in the road no matter where you are in the space. Um, Can I ask a question? Sure. Just something I had a question about when I saw your earlier talk. Yeah? Was whether those rooms are constructed within the room? Like, the, so the ceiling that we're seeing is a faux ceiling. You yes, that it's a drop ceiling. ceiling. Okay, so it's like you're completely immersed in the space. Yes, and this is all new architecture that was made for the exhibition. So it's all mm -hmm. false walls, all false floor, all false ceiling. So it's like all like all their stuff is they loved they loved me. They were so into this project. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was really stressful, I think, but I wanted to do it and the curator was really into the idea. And she had also done like other immersive work with that museum before, um, but no, it was a lot. Well, anyways, I got to do it, and um, that was good. I was happy about that. And um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. And this was a video. I'm gonna show the video because I think um, the sound, the sound component of it is nice because then you kind of, you get a sense of like what was happening because there's, there's another video that was also rear projected um, and the sounds were kind of mingling within the space. And so there's kind of this nice echo here with this shape that that chimes with the entry into the gallery. And then from here, like this is kind of the beginning of the video, and then from here you're kind of in like much deeper forest. Um, and so like that was rear projected in this in this um, in this like silvery 
in this like silvery room here. And that's like another image that you see. And when you walk out of that room, you're at another kind of fork. And that's what's in front of you. And so I think what I think like um, again, like this is a little bit picking up on the idea of like faux representations of nature, but then also kind of like showing images of the natural landscape and then combining these ideas into like a, a, a set or like a science fiction-y experience because like none of what you're really seeing is super possible <laughs> in terms of like the way it's connected. It's very, it's very surreal. It's very, no, like I don't think it's, surreal maybe isn't the right word. It's, it's very dreamy. Like it's almost like you're in this dream where like space is changing around you into new circumstances. And um, this is actually one of the things I've done that I was most happy with, this image here, what was happening in this room. Um, because this was like, this was a crazy project to make. And I almost, like I was really grateful and happy that it was done on time. And that it was, because it was like, this was a lot. And I remember, being like so down to the wire to this and like out like when I got to the museum. So I had no idea how all these different components were gonna go together. But like what we have here is like about from here to the silver is like six or seven feet of empty space. Where <laughs> where like if I didn't have any kind of covering for it, you would then see all the rigging that was keeping everything up. It was bonkers. And so I was just like down at the last, like the last week and I'm going, oh my God, like I'm looking at the plans. I've got like, I've got like a roll of plans. It's like the, the floor plan, but it's like eight different sheets that are the same, is like deal, dealing with the same space, but with like a different level of detail that has to get treated on the space. And so, I mean, there's a, there's a guy who works at the museum who's like a master, he's like a very good carpenter, Eve. And Eve did, Eve planned the floor and the walls to fit properly within the space, but like the ceiling was up to me. So, so I did the ceiling like all myself. And so in any case, I always knew I wanted to have these like floor to ceiling mountains in this one particular room. And so, I'm just going, oh my god, like, how is what's gonna happen? And I had this, like, blue fabric in the studio, like, and I really only had, like, enough fabric to cover this area. And I, I put it in some silver paint, <laughs> cut it to, like, how I thought it would fit. I was like, oh my god, I don't even know, like, what this is gonna be. <laughs> and then we put it up, and I always knew I wanted to have this, like, silver ceiling. We put it up, and I was like, this is, like, the best thing I've ever done. Like, you can't really see it, like, you can't really experience what it felt like in the space, in the image, but the light in this particular area is incredible, or it was incredible, and it's, there's no way to kind of like properly document it, but I was just like, wow, this is so good. Yes? Like, how, how big is that space? How tall are those? Those are 13 feet high. Hmm. Oh. oh. Wow. Yeah. So like the That's walls. Awesome. The wall is sort of an eight-foot wall. The wall is wall, eight foot wall. The wall is an eight-foot wall, and then like the rest. So like thirteen minus eight is four. So I guess maybe that's only four feet. Five, five feet. Yeah. So that's five feet. So I, I I I miss I told you an incorrect height, but still I had five feet of like circle to cover. And I was like, how am I going to do and that? But is it lit from yeah, behind? It's weird. Behind. It's lit from behind. So through the behind fabric. The screen? Through yeah. the fabric. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which was always the idea because I wanted to backlight everything. I didn't because like when you're covering all of the ceilings, like you have a lack of lights. Like your lighting becomes a problem you have to solve. And so um, I was working with a lot of fabric that I was backlighting. Mm -hmm. Are you recording this? Me? Yeah. Yeah, for my own reference. Right. Okay. Just wanted to be clear about that. <laughs> Um, anyway, um, what was I going to say? Anyhow, yeah, that was what happened. This was like one of the great joys, but where I felt like this is not, it, it really almost was like feeling like it was falling apart, but then that moment of tension where I felt that was like one of the nicest things I've accomplished. And so that's actually one of the things I really, it really showed me something very interesting about, um, 
I don't know, like just the way art kind of works sometimes, <laughs> that is a little bit um, uncontrolled and like how you can get nice moments out of that. Um, that mop and bucket is currently in the gallery. <laughs> As are some of these, um, as are some of these pieces of wood. Actually, a actually, there's a lot of stuff that's in this pile that's in the gallery right now. <laughs> Those shutters are in the gallery too. These th these shutters are in the gallery right now, and then that's there too. So this kind of fits with my theme um, of the talk, I guess, or just like the way things will keep going and going. Um, and then this was. <laughs> <laughs> this was also a funny, this, this pile also came out of a very funny series of events where like I, again, like this was a miscalculation actually and so we had again like some, some space to fill where for some reason, I don't know how we ended up without having a panel here but we didn't have a panel here and so we had to kind of improvise a solution where they put some drywall in there and I painted it, but it's like, well, I have to kind of put something here. And it, again, like this was just a time or like a way of working that I still continue to kind of work with now, but it's just like a way of having a lot of um, chaos happening. And so I was actually trying to build something else here. And like you can kind of see the, the residue of that in terms of like the glue marks up there. And at the time I had, I had somebody in my life who was like working with me all the like he was working with me and he was helping me he uh, <laughs> I did have someone helping me on this because I was this was crazy um, and so he was at the space we were working and I'm like trying to make this happen and it was just so chaotic like what was going on just like me in this corner and like breaking what was happening and like trying to kind of end up at this resolution and he was just like I really have this fear right now that you're gonna tear down your whole installation. Oh. I, I, he was being rude for nothing. I wasn't, but it was very like it was a scene of chaos, and I knew I wasn't going to. There was really nothing to worry about. But um, that's also kind of something I work. But that's like a way that I work now, where then it's just sort of like chaos in this working area, and like I'm doing things and stuff is maybe, some of the stuff is maybe breaking and some of the stuff is like maybe getting made but then like that's how I arrived at the results of those sculptures upstairs so it's a similar kind of like I don't know just giving free reign I guess to like a certain kind of energy and um, I quite like this little pile I'm stuck on it for a long time here is like a white, single white rose anyway <laughs> Like, I like to kind of like really flirt with these like very kind of like romantic looking images and things like that but that's not my personal that's not my way actually in real life at all and like my house is not decorated it's not like I have like weird knickknacks because I collect things but like the stuff I'm kind of collecting is like or working with is like not stuff I would ever want around me <laughs> so like there's a little bit of like a distance like I'm working with these types of images or these kinds of like forms or whatever like somewhat ironically but I'm not but it's like I think maybe it's like a kind of irony where there's like a little bit of love in it as well so it's not just like this very kind of there's nothing really cold about it but there's definitely something about it there's like there's a distance where I'm a little bit like laughing at this but I also think that's a bit of a risky business because sometimes people think that that's like serious. <laughs> if you aren't quite like picking up the jokes, then it's like, oh, she really means this, and, and no, I don't. Like I'm kind of, I, I'm kind of a terrible person um, <laughs> in reality. It's like these like ribbons and stuff. So I'm kind of like a bit making fun of this decor, but loving it at the same time. And which kind of sums up my whole feelings towards Paris in a way, where I love it and I'm just at the same time I feel like it's like stabbing me in the heart. It's very, and like this work I was, I went to Paris to do research for this as well, so this is kind of like based on um, aspects of like Parisian architecture, 18th century French decor, like 
this is a long history of interest for me, and that is also at play in the gallery here. But yeah, I would never like. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So this also is a rear projection, and this room was like made of like all hand-dyed cotton that was then put on the walls. And so hmm. the, the quality of the sound really changed when you walked into this room. It was muffled. So like, you know, so weird things are kind of going on with the senses. And um, then you can kind of see through into the next room here. And like, the, again, there's like a similar repeating form. Um, I'm going to show the video for this because this was quite good because I had to make st I had because <laughs> like I had to make I had this idea that I wanted it to be like you're looking you're kind of in this cave but you're kind of looking up at the stars but like you can't shoot stars like you, you can't shoot that like it's not possible there's too much light and so then it's and then also to like what kind of shot could you get of it like you can't it's n not possible and so I was like, how am I going to get these stars? And then, whatever, like one day I'm working, and at any given time I have like four burners of wax going, because this is like a major psychotic production that I'm dealing with. And then one of them, one day it was black, and I was looking in the, I was looking in there, and of course like things were bonkers, and so I had all these, um, there's all this glitter in it. And when, when I stirred it around, I was like, Oh, that's exactly the stars. It looks exactly like stars. And I was like, this is amazing. And I was really happy about that because there it was in my studio. And it took me five minutes to shoot. I just had to bring the camera and just like do a close up on it. And it was like the best ever. I was really happy about that. And um, the sound for this video was recorded in Paris and um, some of it is recorded inside the catacombs and then some of the sound is also the water lapping on the bank of the Seine. <laughs> like it's so romantic but then I'm just like, I just have to put some sound here. This sound works. <laughs> and also, like it's also to the point where I feel like I shouldn't even tell that source of it. But also, the scent is just kind of whatever, too. It's nice, but... Um, I mean, I love it. Whatever. <laughs> um, okay. So then you get the idea of what that is. And... Very disorienting. <coughs> You're also making people look like this. Yes, but there were blankets you could lie on. Oh, okay. Yeah. And people would lie on these blankets. Hmm. People really did lie down on them. Nice. How so long was this up for? Um, uh, October, November, December. Like three months. It was up for three months. Like, oops. Okay, and so here's another, here is a major source of light. And this was actually, this, um, this mess, yeah, this like was all these like patches and this again was, this was a nutty thing, but um, actually my ex-boyfriend sewed that. Yeah. And <laughs> I know, um, he sewed this and um, it, that's like thousands and thousands and thousands of squares. I had an assistant cut the squares maybe. I don't think I, I might have cut like some of the squares but I think that might have been one of the jobs I delegated because that could just be done up to the measurements. And so she did that and then he sewed it. Um, this was before I knew how to sew. I was not a very nice lady around that because it was just huge. It was huge. And like we're getting to kind of like the end of the thing and I'm just like, just sew that. This one's <laughs> need this. <laughs> I can't even talk about it, just, you know, so this was like, this was pretty crazy, this ceiling, but it also it had such a beautiful kind of warmth in the space as well. Um, and there's like another rear screen way of getting light into the space. It's 
through these cutouts here. And there's like a chandelier made out of um, branches. So that's like all crystal and candles and I really don't like Stevie Nicks. You think I might, but I don't, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of that style. And I you think you think I would be like trading in these kinds of images as I do, but um, I do it in a way that I think is a little bit like like I was saying a bit. You know, for me it really feels a lot more like a Philip Guston painting in a way. So there's like a little bit of like that crudeness happening or like that level of like dark humor maybe, but then I'm like working I'm working with like ideas around decor and whatever. Because I am I am interested in that because it's so tactile. Um So what's the, the Dark Souls reference in this? Um it's a reference you know, it's one of those things I just wanted to call it Dark Souls, but it does have a very specific reference that does have um, a relationship to the exhibition, which is Nicholas Gogol's Dead Souls. And so, like, reading Dead Souls kind of gave me some ideas, because the Gogol is a, such a weird book. The book just kind of trails off, even. It doesn't even have an ending. He just kind of stops writing. But I was kind of mad about that, because when I got to the end, I was like, what's going to happen now? Because now we finally expose the corruption. Now the book is over, and it just cuts out. It's very weird. But, like, it's, like, about this guy who's, like, trying to collect souls, which are the equivalent of serfs, but they're dead. And he's doing it because he's trying to become some kind of a gentleman or whatever. And so he goes around to all these people who have dead serfs, and then try to... Um, Anyways, but he describes a lot in like great detail, sort of like these tactile environments, and so that kind of gave me a lot of ideas. Um, and so, but then I don't know, then I wanted to call it Dark Souls. Maybe that takes on a little bit more of like a science fiction aspect, like calling something dark instead of, you know, I don't want to just call it Dead Souls, because that's his book, <laughs> but then calling it Dark Souls has a little bit more, it's a little bit more filmic, it's a little bit more, um... The only reason that I, I asked about that is because there's a, a, a video game called Dark Souls that's notoriously one of the most difficult games to Really? Accomplish. I had no idea that that was the video game. I thought maybe, maybe. There no, was but that, I'm but glad to know that. I'm <laughs> glad it's like that. It's like a difficult game. So this will be the last project <laughs> I, I talk about. Um, and then I think we, because we're already at 3 o'clock, and I'll try and go quickly. Because uh, then we'll go upstairs, and we'll see my new work. And um, it's two. Oh, right. I just haven't changed my um, time. Yeah. It's 3 o'clock in Montreal. But it's been an hour, more or less. So I don't want to keep you any longer. But this show is called The Call. It's coming from inside the house. And this was at Mercer Union. <laughs> There's a lot of comedy in my work, I think. But it's dark comedy, which is why I think also like Dark Souls. Anyway, but then there's like a bit of like tragedy and sad as well. But it's humorous. It's humorous. It's, the tears are... The tears are funny tears. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, okay, so then I fashioned kind of like a studio with, with inside Mercer Union, and so like this actually here is like my real furniture even that I bought there, and that was like a shelf I was even using at the time. Um, and there's some of my toys, or like my little dolls or whatever. What happened to those guys? I don't even know where that stuff is anymore. It's probably in a box. Um, anyway, so like this would be like my mood wall here. Like this would be like a mood wall, like where I'm working and like my desk or whatever. This looks like um, And I don't know what that was about, but I think it's supposed to be some kind of weird mirroring. And there's a lot of kind of there's like some psychoanalysis that's happening in the in the paintings on the wall, but what that we'll see in a second. Um, I really love details, and so like. Yeah, so like these, these are like 50 texts that I wrote and um, painted, and um, there's work that relates to this in the gallery now, or like this strain of my work. Um, 
Um, so there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in these texts. Like I'm kind of riffing on Kant a little bit, and there's a there. <laughs> There's like a lot of 19th century nihilism running through this work. Like, I was taking certain aspects of Nietzsche, but also like the Surrealist Manifesto. So like really, um, like men who really think they're important and their ideas are really important, and like really, <laughs> really kind of like dark and brooding kind of thing. And so then I'm kind of translating these into like a little bit more of like a contemporary um, contemporary speech, but maybe contemporary speech that would be like associated with like say um, like a suburban teenager or something like that. So I'm kind of like melding these identities in a way that I think is funny. And there's a little bit of like, <laughs> there's like a bit of unraveling that's happening in these texts as well. Like, so it's pretty funny what's going on here. And there's the there's the broom again, cleaning up some stuff here. And there's the bucket again with some stuff in it. Might even be the same stuff that's in there now. I can't remember. I don't think so though. Did I use that bucket another time? I might have. And then that's kind of what's behind the curtain. So like, I'm kind of working with this idea. <laughs> I know, I know. So I'm kind of working with this idea of like a cre the accretion of like um, material, but also the accretion of thought, where the buildup is just very, very intense within both of these areas. So that's kind of the connection here, where I think you've got these kind of. Um, I don't know whether these are, I don't know what the proper word is, because there's ones that drip down and ones that go up, but whatever. These ones are going up. Stalactites and stalagmites. Right, so is it stalactite or stalagmite? I think it's a stalactite. I think you're tight. Tight Yeah, so this is, these are like stalactites. But like in this case, like the stalactites are all kind of like weird accumulation, weird studio dust and weird kind of studio accumulation. And, um, but then it also connects in a way to the to the texts, to the thoughts as well. And I mean, yeah, there's some pretty funny texts that I've written in there. Um, but it will take a long time to read them. And so with that, I have some pretty funny texts upstairs too, but they're of a different nature. Uh -huh. And so I don't know if like anybody feels like they want to chime in or ask a question or anybody wants to say something to me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> I did a lot of talking. Yeah, it was okay. fun. I had fun. It was fun to show you my older stuff. Yeah, thanks. My thanks so much. My <laughs> pleasure. That was really enjoyable. Cool. Thanks for shots and videos. Too. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't. I, I I was like working on a film in Paris, and I I did this like very bizarre thing where I never looked once at the footage I shot, and so. Pfft, I don't know what I don't know what it is. I mean, I have like ten hours of footage, and like the way I was doing it often was I was just like really recording my body almost, and I was never really even looking through the viewfinder, and so it was very much about kind of being in space. But it's a new camera, and so I'm not really sure how my shooting technique is going to have manifest itself as video recording. It might be terrible, and I haven't looked at it, but. Um, I will do another video again with that weird Paris work. So, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very, very much.